height. Here we are. As I say, we're in a <coughs> sunny, snowy northeast. <laughs> Miyuka tree. Uh, Harry, Henry, he's not looking so uh, so happy. They they hate being uh, having a coating of um, of snow on them. But as you can see, the the sun's just starting to come onto the top of it there. It's just starting to catch my back uh, my back fence here. Two o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm well chuffed at me and that in a couple of couple of weeks time. The sun will clear my back roof, and uh, once again, I'll get a couple of hours of sunshine in the afternoon. I'll just shut this door. The first thing I want to do is knock this light off, because it does give a, you know, mighty disfiguration to the, um, to the phone. Right, I'm just going to put my camera on there, on the mount, and hopefully I'm in the right place again. God! Temperature on here, that's uh, 55. Well pleased with that. I've been, uh, I've been busy getting a little bit, bits and pieces done. What I didn't want to do, I didn't want to get the garden there, um, as I mentioned in the last video. I was going to try and get up there and get the apple trees uh, planted, but uh, no way on this earth I'll be uh, trying to dig through that ground. I wouldn't be able to stay with it, even with my walking stick feeling the soil. It was absolutely solid, but overnight for a really Heavy fall of snow, about three, four inches. Not as bad as the rest of the country, but uh, it's still enough to put me off from the garden. As I say, I've got to, uh, I've got to take my time, especially with me getting around on a walking stick. Um, just take my time, and uh, it'll all come good in the end. Well, uh, we've got plenty of time to go. I'm going to make some some uh, cool stones in the garden next week. Um, so what I want to do is to switch around my, my greenhouses. What I've done is I've uh, I've switched the melon house over to the um, to 100 foot greenhouse in between the shed, and yeah, I put the heater over there. There's a bit more room in there, so I've got leeks, onions that I had to take up, transplanted from here and take them up there. Um, croissants, uh, the dahlias, lots of stuff going up there, so I've had to make a little bit more room. And of course, it's going to give us a little bit more room down here for uh, getting cracking with the plants with the uh, with the zones. I've already started, um, as I explained the other week, um, any new first timers coming on, when you get your seed packets, always handy to have, read the packs of them, and really they're just a guide for whatever part of the country you live in. Um, what it says in the pack here doesn't apply for down south. A lot, my, lot more temperament all you wouldn't think at this time of the year, I mean Cornwall's getting hammered with snow, you wouldn't think it, but there. Uh, they're not used to that sort of weather, but up north here it's different. We're usually about two to three weeks behind them, so, you know, it's just, as I say, it's just a guide. And if you've got the gear, if you've got the equipment, if you've got heat, you've got light, um, by all means, you can make early zones. But if you haven't, and, and just, you know, take it easy and uh, make a cold zone in the March, which is about the best time. And uh, nothing better than you say, a little plastic prop here as a standard seed lid. Uh, standard seed tray and they, they're great for putting an extra couple of degrees on your compost to keep it nice and warm. I use, I've used these for years, they're fantastic. Now we'll be going to the garden uh, next week and what I'll be doing, I'll be making some cold stones. I've got some, um, I've still got some more leeks to sow, so I'll sow the cold leeks. I've got shallots to sow, I'll get them in. I've got the uh, spring onion, uh, bunch of onions. I've still got a few more leeks to sow, I'll get them in. I've got lettuce to go in, collie, cabbage, sprout, all them go in. And they'll only be under these in a cold greenhouse. I never use any heat from your brassica family. No heat whatsoever. It just makes them cold. Nice and slow. Little, strong, little plants. And that's how I like to grow them. Um, I did make a starting early on the week. Uh, this is one of my, my bigger propagators. That's the big plastic ones that I use. Um, and what I always like to do here is to keep the cloth handy. Because when I'm watering, and I water in the bottom of the trays, so I'm watering for the plants up over. The uh, little water that is in the tray can usually put some condensation on top of your lids. So that's the last thing you want to do is to put cold drops dropping from the bottom of these onto your seedlings. So I like to take them off and just give them a wipe with a damp cloth every other day. And uh, it just keeps them nice and dry. And that's one of the main things of dampening off is it says cold drips onto them. I've, uh, I've started sowing down here, as I say, February, I like to make a, 
I like to make an early start on some of my, uh, my seedlings, so I've started with my geraniums. Uh, now, as I say, as a packet, a seed packet, uh, they're a wealth of information. As I say, they're only a guide, but um, one of the most important things on the seed packets is the seed count. I always check the seed count first. Um, of course, a packet of geraniums, three pound, and I usually end up with about four, five packets of these for sowing. Ten seed, one packet. So what you don't want to be doing is to uh, fill a giant seed tree up and uh, with one packet of ten seed. So look around, you can get these small little trays. You don't have to buy the trays. I mean, you can, you can quite easily go to the butcher shops or any of the supermarkets and get the little black trays. You know, if you have vegetables and your fruit. Put the holes in the bottom there, they're perfect. But I like these little green trays, little quarter trays, fantastic. Ten seeds will sit in there perfect. Now, you know what my mix is, my multi purpose compost, and two good sharp handfuls of sharp sand, and then the same mix again with a handful of uh, very fine vermicking light. And of course, pass it through a sieve, light sealing, fantastic. Set it in, share with some water, and let it soak up, and that's fine, they're away. And of course, these are inside with a plastic covering over. And so, 55 in here, it's going to add in that 2 or 3 degrees to that easy. So, it's you know, it's, it's quite handy. And um, that's my last sown. I've just done them yesterday, and that's a quarter. This is a half seed tree, and of course, that's a uh, cinder area. Now, I always like to get this stuff in early because it, uh, this is what you call a spot plant. Oh, I love growing this stuff. It's absolutely fantastic in amongst the petunias, your lobelias, and your marigolds. And uh, it's the silver one, and uh, the silver dust that grows every year. Now, once again, with back the seed count, and it's 200 on there, so I use a half seed tray. And what I do is I broadcast them, so I spread right over the top of the whole seed tray. And then once again, just a very light covering of the um, of mixture, the vermiculite light and whatnot, and there is. Now, the difference between, as I say, broadcasting them, and when I come on to showing me, um, my main batch of seedlings next month in the March there's a big difference because when I start sowing the likes of Lobelia um, I sow Lobelia a different way uh, my daisies, my Swan River daisy um, they all get sown in lines in the trees and what I like to do with them um, you get a half, a half size seed tray which you've got there I fill that up with compost, get it nice and moist and uh, all I use is a pen for my giver, and I make, uh, you'll catch it up on the other videos, on a half tree I'll make two lines, just press it into compost, so you've got two little rows, and then spread the seed along there, that's for the lobelia, there's a couple of lads asked about the lobelia the other week, uh, David Williams was one of them, um, now lobelia can be a little bit tricky, but if you get your, your compost right, you get your, your conditions right, plenty of light, and um, just a very light covering. I don't use compost in that mix. I just use vermiculite or perlite. And all that is, is just to anchor the seeds to the compost. I don't like being prohibited from light. And it's the same with petunias. Whenever you sow petunias, don't cover them with a compost. Just a light covering of vermiculite or a very light covering of perlite. And that's fine for them. They just anchor in the seed bed. But yeah, I just press a pen or a bit of stick into the compost. Just make a row and then trickle the seeds along. Especially with Lobelia. If you look in a packet of Lobelia, you'll probably get about 2,000 seed in a packet. Now, I'll, always, I'll sow my seed, my Lobelia seed, in a, in a large seed tray, and I'll get three or maybe four rows in there. Just press them with a stick or a pen, indentation, and then you can sprinkle your seeds along that, them lines, and when you come to prick off, it's much easier, because you can prick off into little, little groups, twos, threes, and fours, which is uh, perfect for that stuff. But yeah, that's the way to sow them, but I will be cracking on next month with them. Um, for the time being, I've got the geraniums in, as I say, and I'm going to just pop that lid back onto them. I've just wiped it down now, wiped any moisture off. Um, and that's the idea of the chamomile tea. Uh, it's just to prevent prevent it from dampening off. Um, there's all other things you can use um, when I go on to using the garlic sprays. That's another preventive. Now, what I will be doing next week, I'll have to get up there. Um, it's just the weather that's put us off at, at, the, at the minute. I must get a big spray made up of garlic because I want to get all the strawberries sprayed. Now, we've got pots inside. We'll just, just take all the second year pots in. They're inside now. We've got all our baskets hanging up. Now, they've been in six weeks now. Absolutely fantastic. I just checked them out yesterday. Nice and clean. Um, there haven't been any wa no water in them for six weeks. 
but it's still, you know, that's taken over. All I've had is a sprinkling of um, sulfate potash. But what I will be doing is making up a garlic spray and getting a good blast of garlic spray. And what I will do, I'll add a little bit of soapy water with that bit of soapy washing up liquid. And then I'll spray the the, the, um, the strawberries with that. And if there is any green fly in them emerging, what I'll do, I'll choke them. That's all it does, it get, blocks that gills up and it kills them. Me, that's a, that's a much better method than using chemicals. Uh, and as I say, a preventive is always better than a cure. Um, if you're going to start trying to cure things once they've got the disease, then it's a lot harder than preventing it in the first place. Putting a garlic spray on the leeks, on the um, on the strawberries, sorry, on the on the leaves itself, and all it's doing is, is putting a bit of taste on them leaves. And anything emerging, like say young caterpillars or bugs or uh, beetles that you've missed, eggs hatching out, they're not going to munch on them leaves because the garlic's uh, it's stuck to them with the uh, soapy water, and of course. It's a preventive, and uh, that's why I like to use that rather than re revert to any chemicals at all. If I can get it, if I can get around um, in the garden without using chemicals at all, I will do. You know, it's um, it's the same in the last video. Root and powders. Um, I've used different methods. Uh, I'm always willing to try something new, and that's what uh, that's what keeps me interested in the garden. It's just trying something new every every year. Um, right, so I've getting cut and sewn them first ones. Uh, no, so I'm not finished with the packet yet, so what I've did, I've, uh, if I look around, I'm going to find a, a couple more. I've always got the um, old markers lying around that I've used the previous year. Um, and of course when I want one, I can never find a one. But what I will need, of course, there's my glasses because what I don't want to do is I won't start cutting my fingers off. Um, there we are, here's a white one. No, it was marked up white cornflower. And the year before it was marked up scarlet flax. So it's two year old that one. But it's not going to get thrown away. Um, what I don't like to do, I don't want to stand and make um, and make a, a, a disinfectant or a bleach up for to, for to wash them off. So all I do is I like to uh, like use them this way. Yeah, seed packet. Little cross of the good paste there's in the bottom. Get your marker. Put it through. Pull the top of the bag over. And there you have it. Perfect little marker. Dean Robinson was on about it. Um, Dean Robinson down in there on the back garden veg plot. About there, uh, saving little bits and pieces. Well, we do exactly the same up here. We like to be canny work coppers. Uh, so it's just another thing, another way of saving them. Um, if you don't want to wash the markers off, you can use them for your, your seed packets. Now, what I do with these is. Um, once the seedlings are through in the pots and they're going to go up into the uh, into the allotment, I'll uh, put them in the trays. So you can uh, you can look at the end of the trays and you see straight away what they are. Um, I've got one there for peppers. Once the peppers are potted up into, into their own trays, that'll go in the tray itself and uh, there's no mistake in what they are. So, good idea. Geranium seed, now I'm going to be putting one of them markers through there. And I'll keep all them separate for when, when I need it. That's another little job out of the way. Um, lots of interest online. Uh, thanks very much to all the new subscribers. Quite a few coming on the site. Um, just in case you're getting a bit uh, puzzled as to where we are for the new lads. Um, I'm at home. and This is my little 6x6 six six at home. I do a lot of work down here. My ceilings and that. But with well, the beans are small, it's ideal. It doesn't take up much heating. And then what I can do from here, once the ceilings are through, I can transfer them. Up to the up to the plot from here, and uh, that's what I do. You like your little shuttle service. Um, getting started down here. Now, hopefully, in about ten minutes' time, over in the west there, the sun will just clear the roof, and that'll give me about an hour of sunshine this afternoon. As I say, I don't see any sunshine from right through December and right through uh, January and February. Well, it's the second of February of the day, and within two to three weeks, it should just clear. I'm so fierce, and it should clear my house. Then I'll get uh, I'll get all, all sunshine then for a few hours in the afternoon, 
and then once midsummer comes I've got it all day from uh, 7 in the morning till about 8 o'clock at night and I'm well chuffed for that but uh, of course up the plot different story up there I'm so facing the big tunnels the big greenhouse and I've got the sunshine all day long now them poly tunnels even though they're cold you get a little bit of sunshine in them and it just rockets the temperature no problem they're up in their 50s and 60s so you can make cold zones in there um, which is uh, quite an easy job to do I'm going to have to take these up the plot if you remember I potted um, four or five pot loads of these up, up the allotment and these are the um, the grapevine cuttings ju I just noticed this one yesterday I don't know if you'll be able to see it but this one's budding already on the bottom so I'm going to have to take it out and maybe a bit warm up here for it there's some nice big fat buds appearing on it so what I want to do is I'm going to take out the garden it's a little bit cooler up there and uh, I don't want to rush it too quick I'm just let them grow in nice and slowly and hopefully by the summer there'll be some nice cuttings on there for a couple of people that's asked for them I know Dean Hodge asked for a couple um, Dave from Dave's allotment asked for a one and a couple of lasses on my YouTube site um, so if I've got grapevine spare well I'll be sending them out um, tomato seeds as lot has been receiving me tomato seed now there will be on a, a sheet of um, tissue paper and all you've got to do with them is uh, once you get started now if you want to wait until May uh, when I start sowing my, my tomatoes which will be beginning the next month and all I do with them I just fold the, fold the paper over um, put your compost in, nice and moist uh, fold the tissue over into a piece that'll fit that fit the tree or whatever size tree you use or even round pots, if they're round pots you know you can do exactly the same thing just fold your tissue over dampen it on top of the, the damp compost and then just put a, a light layer of uh, either multi-purpose compost with some perlite in or vermiculite over the top of it and it'll be fine uh, water from down below spray on the top with a bit of chamomile like I do and they, they'll be fine, your tomatoes will come through easy enough um, as I say I'm waiting, I've only got a, one early sown in there of the big tomatoes but I want some nice big plants for April um, and I'll get them I'll get them in, but uh, for the time being I've, uh, I haven't got much to do here as I say I've got a few bits and pieces to get tidying up I want to get all these trees up the allotment um, I was going to start on the apple trees but there's no chance of me as I say it's digging, digging into that land, it's frozen where they're sitting now, they're fine. They're in the greenhouse, up, up the allotment. And all I did is open the bags up, just check the compost because they've been sitting in the shop for three or four weeks now, and maybe it's longer in the back when they were delivered. So open the bags up. If you bought trees, uh, open the bags up and see what they're like. If they're really dry, just put a little bit of moisture on them, a little bit of warm water. That's fine, that'll keep them taken over. I know they're in a dormant position at the moment, but um, I'm still not going to be digging frozen soil in to try and plant them into that. I'd rather leave them in the greenhouse where it's, uh, it's cold and where they're safe for at least another six weeks. There's no chance of me putting them out any earlier. If the, if the soil is like this, they'll stop where they are. I'm not doing them any harm whatsoever and not bring them into any, any faster growth um, just being inside of a cold greenhouse. They're just happy where they are. As I say, keep a check on their roots, make sure they're moist and uh, they'll be fine. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm, uh, what I'm going to do tomorrow, I'm going to start in the mixes, yeah, which I promised in the last video. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to get into one of the mug bins and open one of the mug bins up. It'll probably be quite warm inside because you know with the um, with the with the dying down the manure, it, pro it produces its own heat, so it should be okay. It shouldn't be frozen. So we'll dig out there, uh, probably dig out the whole bin. I'll put a lot of it in the top greenhouse, lie it on the bench. And let all the beasties scuttle away because it'll be full of worms, it'll be full of beetles, spiders, god knows what. Let them crawl away, get them out of it, let it lie for a few days, and then once it starts drying out a little bit, I'll push it, push it through a, a heavy sieve, you know, and then that'll be perfect for going into the cement mixer. And I'll make my first big mix up this year um, for potting off. I've got lots of potting off to do up there. I've got some of them spring bedding plants that are getting a bit too big now, so I'm going to pot a lot of them off especially the delphiniums, the roots are right through lovely strong little plants I just want to give them a little bit of extra feed a little bit of extra compost, that's all in a bigger pot to, to see them over until the end of March beginning of April when they'll be planted out but there, uh, yeah, still lots to do as I say, we'll crack on um, the soft fruit we'll, we'll probably tackle in the next video because we've got the raspberry to look at um, we've got the manure them we've got to feed them, bone meal um, sulfate of potash around them 
and uh, just check out the, the canes are all nice and tied into that the positions. I want to put some wires up ready for the apples because I'm going to be growing the apples on the espalier way. Um, but that's a, that's a three year, as they say, that's a three year um, project. That It's not going to be something we'll, we'll be doing overnight. But uh, if you're enjoying what's we'll say, we'll just follow along. You know what I mean? Where uh, is the sun just coming over there now? So I don't want to spend too much time here because uh, once the sun comes on it, it's going to, uh, it's going to spoil the video. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this, uh, this season. Get myself back to fitness. Not yet, like I've still got my frame on my leg, but uh, within the next couple of weeks I should be starting to walk a little, a little bit better and uh, get a few of the jobs done that um, I like doing. Fortunately, this last year I've just done all the bulk of the heavy work, at, uh, which I'm over the moon with. Been great, really great help. But uh, yeah, we're getting there. So I'm going to crack one down here, do a little bit tidying up, get some of these pots and boxes sorted out for taking up the plot tomorrow. And then we'll get there. Uh, we'll get started on this video, which I say we'll we'll make the mix up. I'll show you how you can split that mix up into a smaller size if you want to make it at home. And then we'll have a look at our apple trees and whatnot, and we'll see what else we can get done up the plot. Okay, so I'll see you all again soon. Afternoon, everybody. Well, you wouldn't think it's the same week. I'm just going to have to shut this door down. <coughs> Not that we've got any wind blowing, but uh, just keep any straight cut the dog away. Uh, as I was saying, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't believe it's the same week as what we had uh, last week. We had up to three, four inches of snow here in the northeast. Bitly cold. Uh, beginning of the week we had Storm Eric passed over. Uh, just made sure I come up this afternoon to make sure the 100 foot greenhouse is okay. I've just been along. There's a couple of little bits and pieces where the polythene's starting to slacken off, but um, no doubt this weekend I'll get my laddie up again, Les, and uh, we'll get it buttoned down. Uh, what I was hoping to do uh, this afternoon was to try and get these borders straightened out. Uh, it's the edge of the pathway is starting to fall a bit, so I'm going to take this one off. This bottom piece, I'm going to put a couple of new stiffeners in and get this all nice and level out before I put these soft putting the trees in. If you go back in some of the old videos, you can see this is where we we'll had the, the first row of raspberries. Now, these were on here for 10 15 years, really productive, but the the, um, the roots were starting to get a bit old, so we thought dig them up. And what we've got over there now is uh, one, two, three, four new beds of raspberries, of new canes yeah, that will. That will stop there for a good enough 10 to 15 years. Um, so we'll clean the soil right out. There's, there's Japanese onions in this bed at the moment. But I'm not too bothered about that. Um, what I want to do is to get my first apple in here. Uh, this is a this is a Bramley apple. This is the biggest of the, the four I'm getting. Now this bed here is about 8 foot. The next bed is only uh, 5 foot. So I'll put the smaller apples in there. I'll put one down at the bottom of the garden. A, a bed over there that I'm, that's going free. So I've got three apples. I've also sent away for a peach, which I'll be growing indoors in the cold polytunnel. I'll make some sort of frame up on there, exactly the same at the end of the bed, so you're not, you're not losing any space at all. Um, as I showed you in the last bit, I've just purchased these from from North Shields, four ninety nine dollars a bargain. And as I say, this is a, this is a Bramley apple. That's why I'm going to put this one here, in the, in the biggest bed, because our Bramleys are pretty um, robust grown. Uh, but as long as you, you, you choose the right stock, a 24-7 stock, root stock, it should, it should be okay. So what I'm going to do with this, uh, I'm going to, once I get this board centred and tightened up a bit, I'll, I'll dig a hole here, a um, couple of good handfuls of bone meal, some nice um, horse manure, I'm getting loads of horse manure delivered, so a good um, a good uh, mix of horse manure in between the, the soil that I'm mixing up, plenty of gravel, and plenty of sand in the bottom of the pit, uh, break it up so it's nice and free draining and then we'll get this centred in there and what will happen next is I'm going to cut this tree down here, there's two nice outward facing buds there so I'll cut that tree with a good sharp pair of settlers, cut all this tough growth off and then I can, once it's buried, well well put in, I can work out where my first cross canes are going to go um, so if this is about two foot left by the time that's sunk down it's going to come to about here so what I'll do is I'll cut this, I'll put my first cane on my first runner about four inches above the top of this. 
Now this will be supported by just a single cane, just one cane, a good heavy duty bamboo tied to the top and stopping the bottom and that's going to hold that main branch here while it grows. Um, and what will happen in the summer time, or the spring time when it starts sprouting away, which it will do, I'll pick the, the best three growths come from the top. The first two shades, seed shoots, that come along under this first um, button here, and the main one I'll use for the header. And what will happen is, next year, as the header grows, I'll cut it again here, and I'll, I'll run another two branches, and then again on the third year, on the top here, cut it again, so we'll have three sets of tiers of apples grown on just on one on this one bed and uh, by the as I say by the width of the bed eight foot and you've got six tiers of apples and you're taking up no space whatsoever. Uh, just a little bit careful pruning throughout the year, cutting the side shoots snap back, uh, cutting the runners off but uh, we'll go all, th all throughout later on. All I wanted to do is to uh, to get these up. These have been standing in the greenhouse now for three weeks. There's no way I was going to try and plant them out in the freezing cold weather. It's, um, it's forecast to be fine all this week, so I'm, uh, I'm determined to get stuck in. If I can get these trees put in this week, I'll be over the moon. But what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll maybe come up Wednesday and maybe I'll jump and get cracking on this. We'll put a couple of stout posts in here uh, and we'll sink the first of these trees in and get them all tied up. I'll put the first runner in there, first wooden button across there, cut this down, single cane, and then it's nicely tied in. And as they, as they start growing away and we'll get the new shoots coming off it, I'll show you how to tie them in and then of course next year and the year after and hopefully three years time we'll get uh, we'll have a fantastic espalier um up a brownie grown. And it'll be marvellous. So that's all to come. Um as I say I'm just taking my time at the moment. I'm not there uh, I'm not gonna push myself. Uh, as I say, if, if you look over to the far side here, this is this is where we planted all the raspberries last year, and we've got uh, we've got five beds all the way up there now, um, all brand new canes. So we'll not get much of a crop this year. We'll get a small crop, but next year we'll get all the new canes grown up. And uh, what I want to do with these, we'll put the we'll put the put the beds along the front, the, the boards along the front of the beds. I want a heavy manure them, a good drop manure on the top of the beds, and uh, a good handful of sulphur of potash. Yeah, that'll probably be done next week. Um, all, I've been along check most of the canes. There's a few of the canes here still need a bit tying in and some of the tops cropping off them. But once um, once the sap starts rising in the canes and they get a bit more uh, flexible, I'll start doing that. I'll tie them all in properly, as I say, and nip the tops of the canes off because some of them are still a little bit raggedy, but we can do all that there in the next couple of weeks. I'll do a video on the, on the soft fruit, probably in about a fortnight's time. But uh, as I say, the, the ground's pretty bare at the moment. We're just taking another, another load of good manure. So we'll be using a good bit of that on these trees that I'm going to plant. And of course on the raspberry bushes. Uh, the bottom the bottom beds will be well mucked because that's where the uh, main crop potatoes are going to go. But um, that's all to do in the uh, in the following year. At the moment, we've, we've, Roger's been busy trying to get the, get the place tidied up with all the wood we had delivered. Um, this plum tree here is uh, it's exactly the same as the the, the, um, the trees I'm putting in now, and that's only this is only four year old. Uh, and it's absolutely massive. I've got fantastic crop of uh, plums off there, but that's only a four year old tree. When I bought it, it was a first year whip, so it's in its fifth year now. But uh, yeah, really fantastic. If I spin you around, I'll just show you the other side. Of course, that's the uh, the big pear tree in the bottom. Now that's only four year old. i have had some fantastic crops off that. Um, along the far end is an apple tree, another, a James Grieve. That's only been in a year, and last year it, uh, it carried about 12 apples on that. I pruned it well back because there's a, there's a lot of bottom branches on it. Um, so I like cut away the, a lot of bottom branches and have a good, a good upright stem uh, with not too much on the bottom but growing upwards. You can prune the top so you get a nice, a nice good uh, bush on the top of the tree, and that's what I'll be home for. There's a couple more little side branches down at the bottom. I'm going to chop them away this year uh, once the sap starts rising and uh, see I'll, uh, I'll concentrate on the top getting, getting it into some shape for next year. Hopefully we should get another good crop off that this year again. Um, I don't expect too much in the first couple of years, as I say. Um, apples, is, it's always worthwhile getting, um, getting the tree the way you want it first, getting it where you want it planted and uh, hopefully you shouldn't have any problems. But this one is uh, for Wednesday, we'll get the, we'll get the sides all tidied in first 
and then I'll put a key in and put the first support on and we'll get that um, we'll get that planted out come uh, come Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's this beautiful sunshine up here in the northeast. You wouldn't think it there uh, by the beginning of the video, but uh, here ho that's life up here. But I'm gonna pop into the um, into the lower tunnel now, into the tough tunnel into the melon house and I'm busy prepping that ready for um ready for the cold zones. Afternoon everybody. Well, back again. Hopefully this time we'll get this uh, flip flip the video finished off. Uh, just a quick reminder for um, for those who uh, who haven't seen the first part of the video, it's um, we'll start a plant of trees there uh, this weekend. Yeah, uh, me and Roger come up this morning and we'll manage to get this bit, first bit of freedom work on the bottom. Now the the, uh, the important thing about um spalier trees is having a good framework to start with. So what we'll do, we'll put a, a main bar right across the bottom here. Um, I've cut the uh, the apple tree, which is a bramble. I've cut the the apple tree right back. I know it seems a bit vicious to start with, but um, believe you me, it's, uh, it's the only way to start a, a good tree off. So that's that's the original the size of the tree that was bought. Now these trees I mentioned they come in little green bags, and what the little green bags are, they're wrapped in a in a black foil inside, and there's peat inside them, so the roots are quite, quite well uh, looked after. Um, if you've got them and you don't want to plant them out just yet, just make sure you've got a little bit of, of water in the bags, and that keeps them roots nice and moist. And uh, all I've done is we've planted it in a nice deep hole down the bottom here, and it's it's just sitting on the um, on the graft. That's where the um, that's where the M22 stock was was grafted to the old rootstock, a different rootstock altogether. Uh, the vigorous rootstock, but the um, your, your top, your graft is a is a small um, apple, which is it doesn't get too much of control. But if you if you do want to, to grow a bush one, and then this is the the ideal way to grow is this foliar. So all I've done, I know it seems a bit vicious, but I've chopped this off here um, from the the main the, the main support here on the bottom. I'll put that to one side. All I've done here is I've given a 45 degree cut just above a couple of nice big buds. And what will happen is these buds will grow out, they'll be the two first side branches, and the main bud will grow on up the top here. And then at the end of this year, we'll put another bar across here. Uh, the main stem will be grown up here, and then that will be cut again four inches below the stem, so we'll get the second lot of, of branches growing along. And then once again, the third year, the main stem will grow up here. Once again, and then we'll cut it there, and we'll have so all told we'll have six branches on here carrying a full crop of apples. It's a fantastic way of growing apples if you haven't got that much space. But you don't have to um, you don't have to use the end of a border if you haven't got one. Against the wall, against the fence, is is fine as long as you bring it off the fence about a good six inches. So that means you can get behind it and do a bit of pruning. You don't want to be hard up against the fence. So it means you have your trees grown up against that fence and it makes it very difficult for getting out and do some pruning later on. Um, once, you, once you've got your main framework done, this is going to take three years, it's not an overnight job. Uh, once the main framework's done, it's quite easy to keep an eye on the pruning. Right, I'll show you all that on a later video. But for the time being, this is for Dean Roberts on the back garden veg pot. All we've done, Dean, is do yourself a nice hole. Um, good sharp, a good handful of them. Um, Full of shops on at the bottom, good free draining. Uh, planted, well packed in amongst it, as I say. It's just nicely sitting on the um, on the graft here. And then I've left 18 inches to the first framework here, and that's all it needs. And then it's going to grow out, and you're going to start building your framework up from there. That's if you want to grow this value here. If you're just planting your tree normally as a bush, as a small standard tree, then you just stick it in the same way, put a good stout stake in it, but as it grows it's going to take up a lot of space, it's going to overshadow a lot of garden, so that's the idea of growing it this way, this way you, you want to take the foot of land and you're filling the whole space up with, with their fruit, fantastic way of growing it, um, what I did purchase this week, again, is, uh, is another fine tree, um, and this is a peach tree, so the difference between these, they're bare rooted, whereas them come in a little bit, little bit of compost rock up and you can keep, keep them well watered with that. This is different. Now these have got to go into a bucket with a bit of water on the bottom so the roots sit in. Now this will be planted in the lower tunnel, which has got the mesh doors on, 
So there's plenty of fresh air going through there. And what we're going to do with this, we're going to train this um, to a fan shape. And we're going, we're going to go the same way as this on a side up against it, up against there one of the ends of the beds. But it's going to be fan trained instead of having them lines. This is going to be in a, in a fan all the way up, and it's the way to grow a peach. I've also got a cherry down there, so I'll do that exactly the same way. But what I'll do, I'll plant this next week. Um, at the moment, it's just sitting in a little bit of water. I want to get my apples finished this week. I've got another. This bed's finished. I've got another bed here to do, and I've got a bed down the bottom. I've got three apple trees all together. So I want to get the apples in. It's, it's perfect time. It's, it's lovely up here in the northeast. See, the sun's just setting there, gorgeous. Um, so I thought, I thought I'd get these finished off. And um, that's just my phone. So I thought I'd get these finished off and uh, get in and start on these uh, start getting ready for the seed zone. I'm going to start doing a cold a cold zone, so we'll get in there in the front tunnel now and get it finished off. But as I say, the peach tree and the cherry tree will go in the either side, either end of the bottom polytunnel. And it'll be fantastic. A couple of years time we'll be getting crop after crop after crop of luscious fruit. And, uh, but if you want to do the espalier way, uh, Dean, well this is a way to do it. I know it sounds a bit vicious, chopping your tree in half, but uh, believe you me, once that starts sprouting and you start building your framework up, within a couple of years you'll have a fantastic tree. But you can also grow it, as I say, up against the fence, as long as you leave plenty of room you want to have a good spot to put your wires along so it's at least six inches from your fence so you can get behind by doing your pruning in later later on in the years. Okay? So that's it for outside here, we'll get into the polytunnel now. We'll crack on, we'll try and sort some there, see it's one out. Right, well, we managed to get ourselves back into the polytunnel where it's a little bit warmer. Um not that much difference from outside. But uh, believe you me, when you're out that wind, that wind's a little bit chilly outside there. Yeah. It's actually 60 degrees in here, and that's in a cold polytunnel in the middle of winter. Absolutely fantastic, I love it. But um, this is what we're doing here. What I, what I intend to do is to get a, get a carpet put on in here, um, which is going to stop any drafts from coming up over the floor. Uh, the trees, the normal trees, no holes in them, so I can water from the bottom. Fantastic. Plastic tree over the top, and he'll sit in here. And what I mean by a cold zone is, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I started on the leaks, and now these leaks have just been so cold, and uh, they were sown three weeks ago, and already they're popping through there. So all them are going to have now is a, uh, a good soaking of um, chamomile tea, and that stops there. Uh, stops any damp enough. As I say, the main reason for dampening off is overcrowding. So, the great thing is about your seed packets, as I say, is getting the seed count on them. And you can adjust the size of your seed tree or your pot or whatever you're doing to the amount of seeds that you've got. Now, I'm going to be starting an early sowing in here of my brassicas, say, cabbage, collie, sprouts, the kale. I'll be sowing all them, multi cell seed trees, just for my own, because I only want a dozen of each plant, so these are perfect for me. If you're broadcasting them, Check in your packet, see how many uh, how many seeds are in. Sometimes you get 200, 250 seeds. You're not going to be using all them, so you know, just uh, go wisely. If you're only using half size seed trays, just scatter them, broadcast them, cover them over. I use a uh, multi purpose compost uh, with a good handful of good sharp sand in, and that uh, makes it well free draining. Well water them first, let them drain off. You see them top, then just cover over lightly with a bit. There's again compost again, but what I like to add is a little bit of perlite to mine. It's just a nice light mixture over the top of them, and then they'll, they'll come through really well. As I say, I'll be sowing mine in these uh, cell trays. My collies, my cabbage, uh, me, especially my kale, because I only want the half dozen early ones. So they'll go into there, and once they fill them roots, once they fill them little pots, they'll come out of there and go into a nice six centimetre pot when they get a nice strong plant. As I say, timing's everything. We'll come to the end of February now. So, if you time your plants depending on what part of the country you live in, we're looking to around getting our plants out from about the end of April to begin of May. You can still get frosts up here in the May, but we'll, we'll like take a chance and see what the weather's like, and we'll get plants out uh, around about that time. So now for me is the perfect time. Plant the seeds in here, 
it's going to be a week or a fortnight before they come through and then another week before they're big enough for potting on so that's another three weeks once they've potted on a nice cup or a nice pot they're going to spend another three to four weeks in that pot and then they're going to spend a week in the bottom polytunnel hardening off, getting nice and strong ready for planting outside so that's going to take us well up to the end of April into May as I say, timing's everything getting the timing right, spot on as I say, getting your mixes right spot on um, I've got the propagators ready I've got all my trays ready, all cleaned out so I'll get the, um, as I say, I'll get all the brassicas brought up and what I'll start on next week um, well I'll be starting tomorrow actually once I get these apple trees finished what I'll be starting tomorrow is say uh, perennials anybody else wants flowers for the garden cheapest chips you can buy at perennials I'll be sowing loads of different ones so I'll make a, an early sowing of the perennials and I'll make a first sowing of the um, of course for love fruits of tomorrow's I'm really looking forward to this year because I've got about uh, 12 to 15 varieties of tomatoes that have been sent from different people around the country. Um, so we'll get cracking on the tomatoes. I'm going to do a, a tomato trial in the 100 foot greenhouse. I'm going to try about 12 different ones in there. I know my five, five varieties that I use every year to be grown in this big tunnel as normal. But I will be trialing about 12 different ones in the other greenhouse and we'll see. We'll just see what they like. Um, as I say, at the moment, everything's doing well. These are the, the leek ones, I've, these are the um, the grapevine ones I brought up last week from the allotment, from there uh, down home in the plot. Uh, and already they're budding up lovely, so I'm just keeping an eye on them. I might have to do a little cut back on them. Um, if the lower bud comes away, rather than the, the, the higher bud up, I can cut them away, or the half inch above the bud, just chop it away, and uh, just let that grow on. Let's see, there's plenty of, um, plenty of cuttings here. Well, these are the ones I just brought up from home. Uh, nice big bud on that one, so I'm just uh, just keeping an eye on uh, As I say, the weather's starting to warm up. Um, lovely here now. So, you know, it's just uh, time now to start sowing. Uh, if you want to sow tomatoes, just make sure you've, got, you've either got a little bit of heat, or if you're sowing in the house, make sure you've got plenty of light. And that's how I always go on about that. Uh, light's essential to get plants. What you don't want to do is stick on the windowsill and then spin the little plants. You want good lights. Make a light box like I did in one of the early videos. Just line a box with some foil, put your seeds in there, and they'll come away just as well. What you don't want is too much heat. I never have a lot of heat for my tomatoes. In there, it's only 50 55. So I'll start an early soon with tomatoes under here in that heat. And they'll just come away nice and slowly. But I will make a cold zone if you haven't got any heat. Just hang for you, and I'll do a cold zone in the middle of March, which I think the temperatures are just starting to pick up. Going about the middle of March, and I'll sow a cold zone of tomatoes, which I like doing with mine every year. You get a later crop, but uh, I think the plants grow much stronger, slower but stronger, and uh, that's where I grow my plants all the time. But yeah, so for the time being, a uh, lot to do this year. Once again, thanks to Dean Roberts on veg, uh, back garden veg. Uh, I'll show you how I'll put my apple tree in. I've got my peach tree to do. I'll show you how to do that next week. I'll make it. Excuse me, I'll make a frame up in the bottom tunnel. And I'll show the peach exactly the same. But I will cut away a lot of the side shoes. I'll leave some of them on that I can start treeing the street away in a fan shape. And the cherry tree will sow in the tunnel. Exactly the same. It's going to be plenty of fresh air. It's just that it's... Uh, it keeps it well covered and you can, you can attack the diseases a lot easier and a lot earlier when, they, when you're under cover. You can just keep an eye on them really well. So that's what I'll be doing next week. But I'll start off with the perennials, I'll go on to tomatoes, and then I'll finish off with the two fruit bushes. And then hopefully it'll be warm enough outside at the beginning of March, we'll get out and we'll, we'll have a look at the, um, the raspberry canes, uh, the raspberry plants, all the soft fruit. We'll try and we'll tackle all that in the next video. We'll get them all there, uh, get them all cleaned down, get them tied in, nicely tied in, ready for the summer coming on, and most importantly, get them fed. They want a good good feeding of potash, and then on top, they want a good layer of horse manure, well watered them, and we'll check all the canes on the way through. But that's that's all for the next video. But uh, yeah, thanks for all the new subscribers, there's loads coming on. Yeah, uh, well chuffed, I'm glad you're getting something out of the, out of the videos. Yeah, uh, we just uh, nice to see you. See us getting something from where and how we like to grow our things up here. As I say, it's uh, when the northeast of England, it can be cold at times, but uh, you know, we love it up here. So if you're getting something from the videos, and don't, 
don't forget to comment down below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to hear what you've got to say. So what we'll be doing is, um, as Dean Roberts had mentioned, we're going to do the Three Sisters Challenge. And now it's, uh, it's growing three veg in one tree. If you've only got a small garden with small patches, and then this is for you. It's a perfect way of growing three veg in, in the same patch, but getting the same results. So keep an eye on our site and we'll, we'll show you how to get on with the Three Sisters Challenge in the coming weeks. I'll start sowing my sweet corn in the middle of March, ready for when my katies come out in May. I want some nice strong sweet corn plants ready in May. As I say, once again, it's all about timing, getting your timing right. I'll start sowing my sweet corn then, and then a couple weeks before the, we'll plant the sweet corn, I'll sow my peas or my beans, wherever I want to grow, and then I'll be sowing my squashes last because it, the squashes are the last things to go around them on the, on the bottom, which is going to keep them nice and cool. But that's all for videos to come. But uh, yeah, once again, thanks very much for watching. Uh, thanks for all your comments and thanks for subscribing. And uh, keep an eye on our next video. We're going to start in the cold zones and we're going to start in what tomorrow is. Okay, so for the time being.